All right, welcome back. Uh, so where we stopped was, do not teach the commandments of men. Yes, so the example that I just gave was the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, so don't, we have to not make doctrines uh, out of our own understanding, right? As teachers, we must be very careful. Right? And we'll also see later on uh, that one of the uh, uh, you know instructions is to teach sound doctrine. Right uh, now, another example I just thought of, uh, you know, during the break was this book, and later on they made a movie as well, The Last Temptation of Jesus Christ, uh, by Nikos Kazantzakis uh, and Martin Skorsky uh, uh, directed that movie as well later on. But the book is 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 just a, uh, you know. I read it out of curiosity. I really wanted to know what it's all about, and uh, because I I know that Jesus was tempted, so I thought it was maybe what in the temptation of Jesus Christ and how he overcame uh, that temptation, and maybe even at the Garden of uh, Gethsemane when uh, you know the enemy came uh, to try and uh, entice him in a different way. But after reading the book, uh, while I was reading it, I said this book can just alter so much in uh, Christianity, in Christendom. Because the book talked about how Jesus was on the cross. When he was on the cross, he suddenly thought to himself, I wish I could have had a normal life with everyone, like everyone else. And the, basically the last temptation was that he uh, he imagined himself to be you know somebody else came and took on his image on the cross and he got off the cross through the help of some angels and uh, after that he went with mary magdalene got married had children uh, and so that's what the book thought right i thought to myself this is such a dangerous teaching and these are nothing but things that People have come up with their own ideologies, their own thoughts, and uh, Paul also writes uh, in his letters. He says, you know, uh, uh, "Don't don't ensure sound doctrine, right?" And and so it's very important uh, that when we teach, we teach from the Word of God. Right? Now we can also teach from the Word with the wrong understanding, right? So we must be aware. We must ask God to help us in uh, as teachers, right? Right, next point, go teach all nations, all things. And Matthew 28, again, Jesus is giving the commission. He's saying, go and teach all nat nations, all the things that I have taught you, go and teach it. Right, uh, And so as teachers, we must be willing to go. Right, The emphasis is not on nations first. The First, the emphasis is on go. Right, meaning, go, be available, go and teach. Now, it does not mean that you have to pack your bags and go, leave your family and go. What we meant was the word go also refers to that willingness, right, to be available to teach people, right? Now, the next point is very important. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. Right, let's read John chapter 14 and verse 26. John 14, 26. John 14, 26. But the helper, <coughs> sorry. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Amen. Thank you so much, Rosalind. This is such a powerful verse. And I think as believers, if we really meaningfully, you know, walk with this, you know, this one verse, if we just truly believe it and walk in this, I think God will enable us to live victorious lives. You know? Jesus is saying, I will send you the Holy Spirit who is your helper. He will teach you and guide you into all things. The Holy Spirit is our teacher, right? Now, there are many, many, many instances 
where you know i've really not understood you know why i'm reading certain verses or certain chapters in the bible but over time the holy spirit has just revealed it in a way right revealed it and just brought sense to the whole thing i think one of the examples i can uh, say is um i think it's in exodus uh, i could be wrong but you know the people of israel are coming out of um, egypt the israelites are coming out of egypt they were, god has told them okay you walk in a certain pattern right so uh, i i think it could be leviticus also uh, so he's saying you know, the tribes you have to walk in certain patterns and when you walk you walk in this way and uh, you carry this kind of a flag and on your flag this should be there and uh, you know uh, walk northwards and so many directions and i thought to myself this is too much i mean i'm not understanding why is this you know why what is all this and then one day just you know later on many many i don't know if it's months or years later i was reading ezekiel chapter 1 as i was reading ezekiel chapter 1 it talked about the throne room of god right it talks about how there's a man there's a eagle the calf the lion and ezekiel is talking about this throne room and how the glory of god the holiness of god and uh, and what these you know images refer to and as i was you know just reading it i thought to myself hey is this connected to what what is uh, what's happening there in the uh, in the exodus in the desert and so i went to google right <laughs> our best friend went to google started typing out said what is the meaning of these things you know, what is the meaning of the uh ezekiel chapter 1 and started doing some research and commentaries and then after doing a lot of research and trying to read and read i realized that ezekiel 1 and in exodus the way that god expected those tribes four four tribes in, in each uh group sorry i think it was three tribes in each group and the way they walked right the aerial image of all of this was exactly the throne room of god now how that got connected i myself don't know of course i read a lot about it right but the first thought is this the same as you know uh, uh, ezekiel chapter 1 is it the same as what's happening in the desert there just a thought the holy spirit put it right now it's not like the holy spirit said yes point number 1 this one point number 2 no just a thought right and i had to build on it i had to go i had to do the research now many a times i've got a thought i've not gone back and done some research and studied about it right but we must remember <clears throat> the holy spirit is our teacher he will guide us into all truth right you tell us you why don't you think of it this way right uh the, uh, there are so many other examples uh there was this so uh, you know uh it it may be very uh you know simple you may think hey how come you didn't know that much right but yeah i, I never thought of it that way i was reading the book of revelations i was fascinated by this whole millennium period right thousand years millennium jesus is sitting on the, in israel in the temple in jerusalem he's there he's sitting and there are people that you can go if you are living there you can go and see jesus so i was fascinated with this whole thousand year millennium no no sin no uh, of course there will be the natural death uh, but but it's going to be very different it's going to be oh, a thousand year powerful reign I wonder if he was reading the book of Isaiah and in the book of Isaiah it said he will rule with an iron scepter uh and uh, uh you know it talks about the lion uh the lion will sit with a lamb and, and I thought to myself okay now this didn't happen at one evening it happened at different maybe 6 7 months maybe a year later as well 
right? And suddenly I thought to myself, what Isaiah is talking about, is it the millennium period there? The lion sitting with the lamb? And I went back, did some research. Mr. Google did the research, did some studies, went on commentaries, did all kinds of things. And I figured out, hey, it is. Right? So these are just small things, but it's important things. It's, it's very important things. Now, who brings it out? The Holy Spirit brings it out as a teacher and a guide. Right? Now, this is only in, I'm talking about the, in the Bible. There are many, many instances where the Holy Spirit has helped, even in my workplace. And I'm sure he will help even in uh, each one of you. Right? He teaches us. Right? He teaches us things to do. He teaches us how to do it. Right? So he's the real helper. And so you may be in the workplace, you may be, uh, you know, maybe a housewife. And he can, the Holy Spirit can teach you how to manage your time at home, how to manage your work, your different priorities at home, how to effectively manage your home. He teach us. Right? So the Holy Spirit is truly our teacher. Now the problem is, sometimes we look at the Holy Spirit as a teacher only for the Bible. No, he can teach us anything in every way. Right? He is God, so he's able to do that. Uh, but more importantly, he, he's our teacher in terms of the word uh, and living this life, um, this Christian life, living holy, living pleasing in, in, in God's eyes. This is what he teaches us to do. Right, So don't forget this. We may have natural teachers uh, in the natural. We have many teachers. Thank God, praise God for them. Uh, but our real teacher is the Holy Spirit because he brings that revelation into us. He guides us into truth. Right, A teacher can keep teaching, but when the Holy Spirit brings, illuminates that truth to us, it brings life into us. Right. So, yes. Next one. Teach with the wisdom of the Spirit. Very important. First Corinthians 2.13. Let's read. Let's read actually both the verses. First Corinthians 2.13. And Colossians 1.28. Yes, any one of us can take one verse each and please read them out. First Corinthians 2.13, Colossians 1.28. First Corinthians 2.13. These things we also speak not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Thanks, Rosalind. Now, Paul is again telling the Corinthian believers, the Corinthian believers are still in this place of, you know, oh, I'll, I, I'll follow Paul, I'll follow Apollos, I'll follow Cephas, this division. Now, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. He's saying in the first in this verse that we just read, 1 Corinthians 2.13, that what we teach was not the wisdom of our own understanding. Paul was saying, now, I could have come to you in eloquence of speech. I could have come to you with, you know, great, uh, you know, uh, skills of pre teaching from the Old Testament, bringing out the Old Testament. And we know that uh, the Apostle Paul was a very, very learned man. But what does he say? I didn't come with my eloquence of speech. I didn't come with all my knowledge that I procured studying under Gamaliel. And I didn't come with all my learning and reading that I happened you know, many years back. No, no, no. I came with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Later on, he says, I preached only the gospel among you, right? And that was with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. That's why later on, he goes and says, now, this may not be wisdom for you. It is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the, will of, it is the power of God unto salvation. So 
when we are teaching when we are preaching, when we are doing the ministry, we need to do it with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Right? How do we know this? You know, why is Paul saying this? Now, remember, Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, which is in Greece. And you look at the background. They were intellectuals, very wise. You know, They said to Paul you know, when he was at that uh, uh, Aeropagus in Mars Hill, yeah, he was standing and saying to an unknown God and all of that, let me preach to you what the true God is. He began to teach them. Now the people there said, hey, this is a very nice uh, understanding. Uh, you come back tomorrow and talk to us. And this is some new things. You know, Jesus, there's a man named Jesus. He did miracles and he died on the cross. He's alive again. So they were very, you know, the, intellectuals no they wanted to know okay you come back tomorrow you speak to us there were some people who said this guy's gone mad let's just get rid of him but paul came back and he preached the word and he preached the gospel and the church was planted in corinth and now he's telling the believers see i did not come in in my own intellectual wisdom i did not say you know uh, try to defend my faith with people i think i came simply with the wisdom of the spirit and god did his work later on it says that in the book of corinth corinthians it says it's wonderful he began from there he he goes from corinth uh, uh, he goes away because they wanted to kill him he goes away to ephesus uh, but what happens is they started small groups so Paul had to send Aquila and Priscilla. You go to Corinth, you look after the church there only. You be there for some time. right? Uh, so we see that there was teaching with the wisdom of the Spirit. And when we teach with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, you know, it will sound much greater than the, the foolishness of this world. That's so wonderful, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit is. God is wisdom, right? He one of his attributes is wisdom. So when he does something, he does something out of wisdom, right? Uh, so we must understand that the Holy Spirit inside us. We teach with the spirit of wisdom inside us, right? Next one, are loved as teachers. We are loved to receive material gifts. Galatians chapter six and verse six. Let's read. Galatians 6 6. Yes, anybody please read. Galatians 6. Let him, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Share in good things with him who teaches. Now, Paul is basically saying here to the Galatians, he's saying, share what you have with others. Now, these could be material gifts. These could be spiritual gifts. These could be just empowering, equipping people. Share in what you have. Now, we must remember that uh, the church in Galatia, especially, had a lot of, Jews, right? Uh, uh, even though it was a Gentile church, it had a lot of Jews. Right? How do we know this? Because uh, after the persecution, people were scattered all across, and uh, uh, Galatia was kind of the closest. Uh, so a lot of people went towards that side, and uh, and also Paul says, you know, we, why are you gone back to circumcision uh, when you were saved by the, you know, by the by faith in Jesus Christ. And so he's addressing uh, both a, a Gentile church, but with a lot of Jews as well. So he was trying to tell them, share in your gifts, whether that is spiritual, whether that is material. Now, here's the thing. We must be careful when it comes to material gifts. Right Now, let, let me give you this example. There will be times people will invite you to come teach or preach. And they will bless you with some gifts, right? Material gifts. 
that's good. We can we can take it as a gift from God and pray for them, bless them. That's all right. But we must never come to a place where we are teaching and preaching on the emphasis of only material things. Right? We never come to that place. We must avoid it. Right? When you look at the ministry of the disciples in the book of Acts, people themselves came and they said they sold everything, they gave it to the ministry, came and gave it to the ministry. But if we are, if our mind is on the material things and we are doing the ministry, we will fail. Right? I was talking to this young boy, young man, right? Uh, I asked him, why do you, he said he was sharing, you know, uh, I want to join the ministry and I want to do something for God. I said, wonderful. I said, why do you want to join the ministry? He said, yeah, I like to preach. I like to teach the word of God. Okay. So I asked him uh, how long, how many, you know, some of the questions I ask, they get upset, but I have to ask them, you know, you can't stop that. So uh, how many, what do you do? What do you, how long do you spend time in God's word? How long do you pray? So he said, yeah, I, I, uh, I read uh, every day half an hour and I pray every day half an hour. So I said, what do you do the rest of the time? Uh, no, I, I'll be listening to music, worship songs. Okay, so so why do you want to do ministry? <laughs> and he said, uh, I like to be on the stage. And uh, sometimes I want to come home in the afternoon. So, you know, it's not like a nine to five job, office job. So I like that freedom. It is the answer you can me. So I told him, do you know that in the midnight, somebody will have some sickness. You have to get up and go and go to their home and pray if they ask for prayer. You can't say, I'll come tomorrow. And, uh, you know, the, the reason I, I'm sharing this is because people choose ministry for wrong reasons. One is, you know, for, uh, okay, so that, you know, I don't have a nine to five job. I can do things on my own. Two, is because, okay, people will give. I don't have to work, people will keep giving and I'll keep working and I'll keep doing ministry. I'll go pray for people, they'll give. Now that is the mindset right? that, that will change our, our ministry won't be effective. And it's sad to see that even ministry right now across the globe, and when we look at the West, it's just some of the things are so horrendous, right? Meaning it's so bad where they say, you know, you have to donate so much, you have to give this because we have to buy this, we have to buy, you know, these certain things. Uh, and, and what happens? It, it's more of out of force and the ministry is not, you know, it, it, the mind is changed from teaching, preaching, equipping the, the believers to receiving, receiving, receiving. Right? And so we must never, never come to a place of choosing ministry because it can be a financial gain to us. No. Right? It, it, it should, you should be in a place where you say, God, I'm willing to do, do the teaching, do the preaching the way you want me to do it. And, you know, Jesus says it so beautifully. Actually, this morning I was reading it. Look at the birds in the air. They don't store up in barns. Yet the heavenly father provides for them. How much more will he not provide for his children? Now, this again to became another problem. Right? A big problem. People use this verse and say, you don't have to save up. You, God will provide for you. You don't work. God will provide. Look at the birds. No, no, no. You have to take things into context, right? So regarding material things, it's okay when people give, but be assured that your heart is not on that. Your heart is to see believers equipped in the word, to see believers mature into Christ likeness. That is what our heart must be for, okay? Uh, next one, very, very important. Ensure sound doctrine. There's a couple of verses in Timothy. Now, it's interesting to see Paul is writing about sound doctrine to Timothy in 
in three or four more, actually more than five, six places. Um, and why does he do that? Because now Timothy is looking after the church in Ephesus, where Paul has been there for three years. He's taught them, he's you know been there for three years, ministering to them, and he's heard of reports of wrong doctrines happening there. And so he's writing here and he's saying first Timothy one three. Maybe anyone else can pull up first Timothy six three and then second Timothy four three. So let's just read those. First Timothy one three. First Timothy one three. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Yes. Thank you, uh, Rosalind. The next one, First Timothy six three. First Timothy chapter six, verse three. If anyone teaches false doctrines and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the godly teaching, he is considered an understandsman. Yeah, thank you, Jeffina. Anyone else can read Second Timothy four three? For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Mm. So we see these verses. We'll come to Titus one eleven, but you see these verses here, right? First Timothy one. Of all these verses, Paul is saying there will sound doctrine is very important. So he's telling Timothy, Timothy, we have taught you sound doctrine, but there will be people who will come up with their own doctrines, their own ideologies, own things that their itching ears want to hear. Now you be careful, Timothy. That's when he follows it up and he says, you preach the word. Right? Now, why is sound doctrine important? Sound doctrine is important because as a church, as believers, we cannot teach wrong things because it's just going to divide the whole you know, um, church. Now, there are plenty of examples of wrong doctrines that are happening. And some of them are so open that they have throngs of people, thousands of people following them. Let me give you this example. I think I've given it to you earlier on, but uh, just, you know, even for me to say it is a problem because I feel so sad when, when, for me to say this. There's a man in Australia who says that he, he is Jesus and he's married to one lady and she says uh, she's Mary Magdalene. And so he says he has this, you know, small meetings and all in the house. Initially, he says, and this interviewer is asking, who are you? He says, yeah, I'm Jesus. I've come back as a human being. The interviewer is asking, did you die on the cross? He said, yes, of course, I died on the cross. So how did you feel on the cross? And the interview was so terrible. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was I was thinking, God, why? How can people listen to this? How can they obey this? But listen, you know, the, he doesn't have hundreds of people. He has thousands of people following him. And the interviewer is asking him, so you, actually it was a mockery because the interviewer was just laughing throughout the interview. He kept saying, so you chose Peter. Tell me how was Peter. And he's explaining. So Peter was like this. So tell me how was John. And he's explaining. Uh, the interviewer is giving him the mic and he's explaining. Uh, so how did you meet uh, your wife Mary? Oh, yeah, when we were, you know, walking down the fields in Jerusalem. I remember those days. And it was just, you know, it, it sounded funny, but it was very sad. And now here's the thing. There are thousands of people globally who believe that he's the Messiah, right? 
and what is his message his message is not about uh, you know uh, repent and believe no his message is god loves you that's a message right? god loves you and this is what you can achieve when god loves you so more of positive talking positive uh, preaching now there are plenty of people who have come up with all these things remember paul is writing to the thessalonians some fellows have come into the church in Thessalonian, Thessalonica and they've said, hey, Jesus has already come and gone. Rapture's happened. So these people are worried. Rapture's happened. Why am I still here? That means God doesn't love me. Paul, please help. What happens? Paul sits and writes, see, that's not so. It's a false doctrine. Don't believe in that. Why? Because don't you know, in the twinkling of an eye, first you know, first the uh, uh, spirit of lawlessness should be revealed, who is the Antichrist, and after he is revealed, in the blink, twinkling of an eye, we will get a glorified. And he explains the whole thing of the rapture. Sound doc, you know, wrong doctrine was there during Paul's time. Wrong doctrine is there now. Wrong doctrine will be there even in the future. That is for sure. Right, well, we must ensure that we teach the right doctrine. Right, uh, you know, it's sad to see that people who are in ministry are losing, especially pastors and leaders, many of them are losing that, you know, that fervor, that passion for God. Many of them even come to a place where they have. Just turned away from the faith. Why? Why do you think that is? Because the enemy wants to steal the word of God and he will use any means. Right? Remember the parable of the sower? He'll use any means. He can use wrong doctrine to steal the joy of God or to steal the word of God from your heart. Right? So, as believers, ensure we listen to sound doctrine, ensure that we also teach sound doctrine. Right Now, there are wonderful ministries all around, globally doing wonderful work, very popular and all of that. And now that with you know digital uh, media and YouTube and Facebook and all the things that we have, we must be careful, right? And ask the Holy Spirit to teach us you may be listening to a message. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, to guide you into the truths. God, I'm listening to this. Don't blindly listen to something just because you like what that person or the ministry, right? We need to ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Let me give you this example. I won't name the ministry, but a wonderful, wonderful man of God. Um, and I listen to plenty of his sermons and I used to read I, I still do read a lot of his books I'll use this example I guess and uh, he was preaching about Jonathan and David and it was wonderful uh, we've heard thousands of or hundreds of sermons on Jonathan and David I was just listening to it and as I kept listening to it 10 minutes down the sermon he started saying uh, Jonathan and David were not really friends and I can prove to you why they weren't friends. And so he kept on preaching. And I said, now we know that right, Jonathan and David were soulmates, right? They were good friends. But he brought out the whole thing of, you know, uh, three out of five times. Only Jonathan knew where David was. So how did Saul get to know? And uh, so the whole sermon was, Jonathan was like a backstabber. He pretended to be David's friend, but he went and complained, and he he told uh, Saul, his father, that you know David is hiding here, and David and Saul was able to come and try and capture him. Now we know that's not true. Right, uh, being the king of Israel, how long will it take for him to find one man? He has thousands of soldiers under him. You will be able to find. But what if somebody has just blindly or just believed it? Oh, yeah, true, no? Three out of five times. Yeah, true. That means David and 
now a whole new doctrine has started off right so we must be very careful uh, i'm sure many of us have heard may have heard sermons or teachings be careful ask the holy spirit is this true god holy spirit guide me uh, speak to me is this is this something that is in line with what you want me to learn is it in line with the word of god and what does the bible say the holy spirit will guide you into all truth he will tell you okay no you you take this don't take this right he will guide you into all truth sometimes he'll put a disinterest you know it's okay you listen to this or don't listen to this for now he has ways of leading us right now next one women teachers now, this is a big problem let's read first timothy chapter 2 and verse 12 let's read first timothy 2 12 titus 2 3 and 4 first timothy 2 12 and i do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Mm. Next one, Titus 2, 3 and 4. Thank you, Rosalind. Likewise, teach the older woman to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, mm. but to teach what is good. Then they can train the younger woman to love their husbands and children. Mm. Thank you, John. Now, what is happening here one he's saying to timothy timothy i don't allow a woman to preach now the whole you know in christendom woman you should not preach you should not teach so and it's prevalent now also and not only here not only in india but in all other nations as well we must take this into context right and we i'm sure we've learned about this in hermeneutics on why why paul is saying this you know it's more to deal with the place uh ephesus and you know a place where uh people who are the women who are coming were a lot of them were temple prostitutes they were they were used to uh, places of prominence they wanted to be prominent they were wanted to be in the limelight or they wanted to be the center of attraction or center of attention more than more, right so paul is saying okay timothy don't allow them to preach for now hold on now if you look in other places has paul chosen women definitely he has aquila and priscilla phoebe lydia from plenty of other leaders preached phoebe preached the gospel preached the word right and aquila and priscilla were looking after the church in corinth later on they looked after the church they went even to rome they were ministering together so we must take the text put it into context right the reason is because of the background of the of the women during that time Probably what he was trying to put across is they've just come in, give them some time, let them grow spiritually, let them become mature, let the things, you know, you know, they have received Christ, but there are things in the mind that has to change. They have to mature in Christ. So don't allow them to preach for now. Give them some time. Right? Now we've taken this into uh, wrong context. Now, if you see even in the Old Testament, women were there. Why did God use Esther? god could have used somebody else so we've come to this place of no it should only be men and because of this one verse no so we we must always take a text and compare it to the entirety of god's word is it in god's nature to use to tell women not to preach definitely not because god wouldn't have used women in the uh you know in the old covenant not in the new testament right so we should be able to, you know, come up with good answers for these questions as teachers, right? It may, it may come to women covering the head. What about feet uh, wearing shoes or uh, and entering the church? What about, you know, uh, divorce? 
what about you know god says i hate divorce but what about uh, uh, you know if a, if a couple is if a man is abusing his wife and beating her up and uh, she's just okay with it because god says i hate divorce so we must be able to teach right uh, give people good answers the ability to uh, you know teach well right and that's the next point the ability to teach well we must be able to put across our thoughts our our words whatever we have learned prepared to put it across in the right way right next raise up teachers second timothy 22 yes anyone can please read second timothy 22 Second Timothy 2 2. Yes. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men mm. who will also be qualified to teach others. Mm. Thank you, John. What you have thought, seen me teach and preach, entrust to others who can do the same. Now, I like the word entrust. Entrust means to hand over to others trustfully hand over to them right raise up teachers raise up people who can teach and develop this whole thing of teaching now in the book of acts we see that's what happened in the church in antioch why was the church in antioch so successful in a short period of time they were able to send out apostles prophets evangelists they raised up many 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 leaders why because they had teachers and leaders who taught them excellently barnabas well taught and paul the apostle well taught right they taught the word of god they preached they raised up leaders and we see the sign of a great leader then apostle paul the sign of a great leader is to raise up other leaders paul did it brilliantly he raised up many many leaders right uh, so many so many leaders he was able to raise them up and you know he took a 17 year old boy Timothy took him everywhere by the time in the end he put Timothy in the most difficult place okay Ephesus you look after you have seen my life from the time you're a young boy whatever you seen me do you go and do it in the church raising up leaders raising up teachers encouraging and this is the greatest sign of a leader greatest sign the greatest sign of a leader is the number of leaders you can raise up not how many sermons we have preached or how many sessions of worship we have led or how well we can teach all that is good the greatest sign is how many leaders we can raise up to continue the work we're not going to stick around the whole time right there's going to be a next generation Right? And the next generation is sharper, stronger, wiser in every way. Right? I got my seven-year-old son. He says, he came up to me and he says, you know, God, I wish I was Elijah. You know, Dara, I wish I was Elijah. I said, why? No, because he called down fire, no? So there's some things I don't like. It just, I said, no, that's not how, how you can do things. No, but still he also prayed and the ravens came and i was wondering from where did he learn all of this of course he's going to children's church but you see the understanding is very different right he, that he came up to me and he said uh, i i spoke to the holy spirit just now there are some things i need to speak to you about and i said okay uh, he's seven years old I, I spoke to the holy spirit i said where is he is there inside me you're teaching this you don't uh, you know is there inside me i said okay good yeah he just showed me he's speaking to me right now so i'll i'll talk to you later you know and i was like you know when i was seven years old probably playing with toys but but the next generation is way above right? way way above right uh, uh, the questions they come up with he, he asked me once uh you know is jesus a white or a black i said it doesn't matter he's jesus whether he's white black yeah. no but he was a person no he was a human being also no so tell me was he white or black so, 
see the jews are usually this color so he was not white nor black he was brown and you know also he was like us you know the understanding is so different the way we receive things in the gospel and now the next generation we must be willing to give them answers we must be willing right so raising up good teachers is very important finally last point there will be false teachers second peter chapter 2 and verse 1 yes anybody can read second peter 2 and verse 1 Second Peter chapter two verse one. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign law who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. There will be false teachers who will secretly come in between, and they will deny everything that has been taught. They, secretly they'll come so we must be aware right when revelations talks about how the uh, how the antichrist will you know will send out uh, teachers and false teachers right who will say okay no he is not the messiah or you know uh, this is the truth you listen to this listen to him he is the greatest man he is the uh, you know the antichrist he is the messiah he can do great things he will he will take you he will help you in every way and the bible also says that with their false teaching there will be signs miracles and wonders they'll be able to do all of that you can you believe that um, you know when Moses threw the stick down, it became a snake. But even those other two threw the stick, their sticks down, they became snakes. Right? Spirits of divinity, false spirits, false teachers will come. But as God's children, we have this assurance that the Holy Spirit is inside us, who will guide us to all truth. Right? The false will be taken off. He will guide us right now in this coming generation we have people who are saying jesus is you know just a man he was not he's not the messiah or you know this is what uh, the bible is it was just a false book somebody has just written it uh, how can it be so how can it be that all of them have written and uh, you know this writer said something and all kinds of things ideas and strategies the enemy can use to bring false teaching right how this is one one person one of a old friend of mine he came up to me and said how can we turn into something in the blink of an eye and meet on the clouds it doesn't make sense you know because i heard that the rapture is not going to happen he's a believer right uh, and i and i believe that the rapture is not going to happen so he's he's saying that to me he's saying it doesn't make sense because when when you think of it, you die, you go to heaven. That makes more sense. Why all this rapture in between? So all kinds of teachings will come, erroneous teachings. Anything that is even a little bit diverted from the truth is false. There's true, there's false. It can't be bit true and bit false. It's either true or it's either false. And so as teachers, and ministers of God, we must be willing to, you know, see what is false, see what is truth, and speak it out. There'll be people who come and say, there's no heaven, there's no hell. This is only hell. Earth only is hell. All these kinds of things, right? So be willing to uh, be prepared and to teach the true gospel, the true word of God, right? Okay, any questions, any thoughts? I, I know I've been talking too much. I didn't get to hear from any of you. Uh, maybe next week what we'll do is we'll keep it open for some time uh, to share our thoughts. Uh, I would love to hear from each one of you. Like, what, what do you think about this whole ministry of teaching? So, And uh, probably learn from our, each other as well. So, Right, so we've run out of time. Let's quickly close in prayer. Right, let's pray. 
Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for your word. And I pray, God, that you will continue to teach us, lead us, and guide us. Lord, bless each one of us, Lord, and help us and use us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a great week ahead. Uh, God bless you.